Welcome to the Back Porch Education Podcast. Today, Steve and I are going to talk about uh, the extracurriculars of the curriculum when it comes to homeschool, the fun stuff. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Steve, I've got a poem. Excellent. I'm going to try and be more positive about these <laughs> sorts of things. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, incidentally, I'm glad that you said that. Uh, Mary and I are reading uh, through the Laura Ingalls Wilder uh, series, and one of the things that I think that it's Laura who is saying it now to Rose. But, I'm, but we see it earlier when Laura's mother says it to her. What she says, uh, what she says is, what can't be cured must be endured. <laughs> and uh, that's, uh, in the, sure. that's in the parent manual, yeah, that's I right. think. That's right. She's, she needs to cite her source. That's right. And, uh, you know, for us today, uh, surely... You've seen the light now. You you know that um, poetry isn't something that's going to be cured. So <laughs> best to just uh, another thing she says is uh, that which must be done is best done cheerfully. Yes. <laughs> so um, okay, well, good. Um, the the poem that we have is uh, not a million miles away from uh, that sentiment, uh, but I think it's a nice way of of working into. Um, the attitude that we should have toward uh, the, our curriculum uh, as, uh, as we're homeschooling. So uh, it is by a, a poet who is alive, <laughs> last I checked. Um, well, surely you're not suggesting Frost is dead. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's kind of like spirit. when people say <laughs> Latin is a dead yes, language, yes. right? That's uh, <laughs> Frost is a living poem. Uh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> In your memory. That's right. In memoriam. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Billy Collins uh, wrote this wonderful, uh, wonderful poem. And it is uh, entitled Introduction to Poetry. I ask them to take a poem and hold it up to the light like a color slide. Or press an ear against its hive. I say, drop a mouse into a poem and watch him probe his way out. Or walk inside the poem's room and feel the walls for a light switch. I want them to water ski across the surface of a poem, waving at the author's name on the shore. <laughs> but all they want to do is tie the poem to a chair with a rope and torture a confession out of it. They begin beating it with a hose to find out what it really means. Mm. I've beaten a few poems in my lifetime, I guess. But yeah. The, you're right. The, the, the tenor of the poem is, is, is well suited for the subject of, the, of this podcast, I think. Mm. Um, I probably get asked by people wanting to get involved with or already involved with home education, uh, the questions about curriculum more than anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you decide how much is enough, is is too much ever enough, so right. on. Um, and all the discussions of multa non multum and, and, right. and, and, and you know, do you do just a little bit really well or do you just try and cover all your bases mm -hmm. at, a, at an inch depth? Right. And, and those are, frankly, uh, philosophical questions that have to be asked. But I'd like to just have some fun talking at a practical level right. today right. about what, what can you get away with? What should you get away with when you're sitting down thinking through? We've recently talked about having a schedule mm -hmm. um, and kind of said if it, if it works for you, go for it. But it's not something that you should be... Yeah, uh, beating with a hose. That's right. <laughs> tied to the chair. That's right. Um, and I'd say a lot the same sentiment about curricular choices. Mm -hmm. That that the freedom given through the impetus to 
to school at home yeah. affords you a lot more than than any of us that teach in the classroom where people are foisting upon us school-wide expectations or, uh, you know, if, especially if you're in the public setting, you know, district-wide decisions right. made by people in smoke-filled rooms way off, yep, yep. far away. Um, when, it, when it comes to mom and dad deciding what junior is going to study, you, know, you, know, you are the committee. That's right. <laughs> That's right. The judge and jury and executioner. As it were. Uh, of executioner of the lesson. <laughs> okay. Right. Not of the child. You have the host. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> But no, I you know to return to um, that whole set of questions that you uh, that you brought up in the beginning, right? Um, I think that whole set of questions is best answered with the whole set of answers that we're giving all the time, all the time, right? right. Begin with the end in mind, yes. right? Uh, consider where you want the child to go. Cultivation of wisdom and virtue. And look, that's it. Those are the answers. Right. Well, and, and, and but that's not always, <laughs> you know, like that's not all there is. Right. No, you still have to apply that. Exactly. And and I wouldn't want anyone to take the practical conclusions I've derived from asking those questions and try and press those into. Steve's curriculum for homeschooling, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because one of the things we've had the freedom to do is some experimentation. We'll try this, and if it fits this student, we've we've in bits and patches homeschooled all four of our boys mm-hmm. for radically different students. Right, and in the homeschool setting, except for the one year where we we taught two of them together, in roughly the same material. In all other cases, it's been what fits this child, my child, right. the best. Wow. And, and, and as they've gotten older, I think this is a big deal. You know, when they're young, I, I, don't, I don't think curriculum is as much a conversation. I mean, what will help the, the, the teacher, the parent, teach the best yeah. is more the thing. But, but as they get older, if we're pursuing this wisdom and virtue, mm-hmm. And that has us focused on, shall we say, the tools of learning. Mm-hmm. Then, as they get older, I'm less and less specific in my mind about what they ought to, what content they ought to be teaching. Right, right. And wanting to give them some rope, uh, some space, a workshop within which to practice and and mm-hmm. and, and refine the tools that mm-hmm. we've been working on. So, is it does it does it have to follow? world history this year and U.S. history this year. It's a, you, you've always, one of the ends that you typically have in mind when you're schooling is, these days is college. Right. And you don't want to paint yourself into a corner, so to speak, and realize I haven't given my child what they need to matriculate into college. Mm-hmm. So you've got to be thinking about that. But even there, frankly, most states, when it comes to 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 a college preparatory high school experience, a lot of electives, right, and a lot of leeway. Mm-hmm. They want a certain amount of study in certain subjects, but who's to say it must always be this one shoe that fits every foot? Right, right. We don't need to commit the Cinderella sin of of, of suddenly everybody in the kingdom fits into this slipper mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. because we know our child's foot. So yeah, to speak. yeah, We're really getting it. Right, no. I think that's right, and I, and I think that um, you know, for a lot of um, for a lot of us, the the college uh, the looming college acceptance mm-hmm. is a, a, a cause of great consternation, uh, and it's probably it doesn't the ropes. really need to be. I don't. I, well, I, that's not exactly what we're talking about today. But um, y- you know, uh, like look at look at the people who go to college. Right. There's so many people. Right. Uh, and so if you have uh, if if your plan is uh, Ivy League or bust, then yeah, you you've got you've got your work cut out for you. 
Um, but man, I, I think there are a whole host of, of pretty fantastic institutions who are just not uh, examining a child's curriculum the way that the zeitgeist or the uh, the nervous parent believes right. that uh, that curriculum is being surveyed and evaluated. So let's take Collins' front end of his poem, the fun part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The holding it up to a light. Mm -hmm. the, I love the drop a mouse in and right. see it worry its way out. Right. Uh, or, or I love my students uh, when, when occasionally this poem comes up in class. Love the the water skiing image and waving to the author as you right. go by type thing. That that sort of flirtatious experimental. What's knowing what we want to accomplish? How can we put a twist on it? Yeah. Frankly, is helping their college aspirations. Yes. It's making something unique right. rather than the cookie cutter that you might be tempted towards yes. thinking that's safe. Right. But, you know, you, you, you could probably go too far with it, mm -hmm. but a lot of it is the comfort of the teacher and the comfort of the student. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you're talking about a kindergartner, you're talking a lot more about the teacher. Mm -hmm. And if you're talking about someone in... in high school, I think you're talking a lot more about the student. Yeah. Because they should, by this point, be starting to teach themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And be starting to show proclivity. Right. Right. If you're trying because they've done so poorly in math their whole life, yeah, trying to force the math thing because STEM is where they're going to make the money, you, you're, you may not be using home education uh, correctly. Yeah. Right. It's to, it's to be able to tailor it towards the child, not to tailor the child right. <laughs> towards it. Right. And 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 so as a result, uh, in in one instance, recognizing the 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 makeup of my child and his predilection towards that which is practical. Mm -hmm. You know, we've we've we run across some material. Perhaps heard of Dave Ramsey and his whole oh yeah I have uh, uh, stuff. Well, he's got believe it or not a personal finance class that he offers for high school students that n contains enough mathematics, mm -hmm. but it's talking about something that that my son had interest in my Very money. Cool. Very cool. <laughs> and so for the it, it, the comment was for the first time I kind of enjoy math. Class. Wow. Um, and he's at that point where we feel we've rounded out his high school math education enough that some of this elective type, how would you like to, uh, we want you doing math. Yeah, right. But what kind of math would you like to do? Or, or, or with science, you know, he, uh, history, for instance, a great example, using the same kid, he'd much rather learn about places than people. Hmm. He has a real predilection for geography. In fact, he, he blows me away in his knowledge of, the, of world geography. And, and why wouldn't you use that? Yes, right, exactly, exactly. Right, yeah, when you have the... I, I can see it uh, more easily, frankly, with, with older students, when, when that, um, whatever it is, has taken root. Uh, man, then you all of a sudden have some really interesting uh, pathways open up, right? Uh, Really, some unique uh, situations are developing for a student to succeed, uh, and and it's a lot of fun, right? It's like when the it's like when the English teacher steps into the science room, right? <gasps> it's like what this might be a dumpster fire, <laughs> but it might also be really interesting, right? Um, you're you're going to get uh, an English teacher who is whatever is uh, like I know what I'm going to do uh, if I step into a science room and that is I'm going to go straight to etymologies yeah, right exactly. I'm going to be mm -hmm. digging at the meanings of words not to mention uh, your Latin background yeah yeah uh, that's right that's right I'm gonna I'm gonna use that for sure um, why because I don't know science 
frankly, yes. Partially, yes. Like that's a weakness of mine. Like I don't, I, think I don't it's know more the passion stuff. Yeah, yeah. More the passion than the fear. Right. Exactly. And so this is what I know. This is what I'm interested in, and I can use it to teach science more effectively than if I tried to uh, imitate my science teachers who were born and bred science teachers right. and very good at science. Right. Uh, and they were just able in a way that I'm not and informed in a way that I'm not. Well, I can't, I can't mimic them, but I can do it the way that I can do it. The same for your son, the same for, um, you know, a homeschooler, uh, somebody who is uh, being educated at home. As they grow older, those proclivities start to take hold and they find their own inroads right. into right. the great conversation, as it were. Well, we live in this amazing time when there is so much more for the autodidact, mm -hmm. the, the student that's got the spark. He doesn't have to pull it all from the human teacher parent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a right. lot out there that with direction, you know, as, as, as they get older, right? Yeah. And, and, and so, yes, in the early years, it does require a good, fundamentally educated parent. Mm -hmm. I think most parents have that. Right. Can you read? Can you cipher? Can you write? Mm -hmm. Can you think? Then, then just... Transfer that to your child. Right. Build a good, strong foundation, and then they're going to come along with with aptitude and predilection and, and passion, mm -hmm. and say, "So if this is what's interesting me, what can I do with my schooling that that because so much of education? I think we've talked about this, but I I, I know it's true. Attention is front and center to education, dude. So if you're homeschooling. And, and by that, already, as, as, as the child gets older, pulling back, less over the shoulder, more go do this and then, then we'll look at it together type thing. Much more about accountability than, than, than instruction mm -hmm. in, the, in the junior high, high school age. You want them excited about what they're doing. Absolutely. And I would say that the same is to some extent true. If you're trying to build the basic skills of reading, writing, and arithmetic into a, into a first grader, mm -hmm. You're going to have to have engaging literature. Right. You're going to have to have them writing. Please have them writing about something that interests them. Right. Instead right. of the banality that's all too often in the the Dick and Jane right. readers or something. Exactly. That, that will make kids hate right. reading mm -hmm. <laughs> and make them hate writing. Yep. And um, and, and so again, we're I, I feel like we're back to what is it that we're trying to accomplish? Mm -hmm. What is the end? But the playfulness of Collins with the poem is is very indicative to me of I, I, I sometimes just feel like I need a little sign to, to you know we could market this to, to a lot of homeschooling moms who are sort of controlled by that fear that I'm not I'm not capable of this mm -hmm. lighten up and have fun yes <laughs> I mean, exactly I don't mean that rude right I mean that in in an encouraging supporting sort of way, right? you've got this, you can do this. Yep. I had a fascinating conversation with a, with a fellow um, who, who, who was a, a scholarly man, but he loved teaching, and frankly, he loved teaching younger mm -hmm. than older. He mm -hmm. taught a lot at the college level, but his predilection was, in particular, upper grade school. Wow. So, so we were talking about fifth grade, mm -hmm. and his statement uh, maybe I'll put in the in the notes his book where he talks a little bit about this as well. But but this was over lunch one time, and he said to me, uh, his his friend had set him up with the ability. He was kind of in between jobs, and he, well, you can teach me for me for a year. I'd love to have. I've got a fifth grade position open. Okay. College professor. Right. Do you want it? Right. He says, how much freedom will you give me? He says, I, I'm, I mean, you taught me. Yeah. I'm inviting you to teach for me. Right. I give you quite a bit. Right. And he said, okay. And so they get close to the school year, the contract sign, he's ready to go and everything, and he's like, you haven't really requested any materials. Yeah. I mean, you're welcome to, to modify things. I, I'm 
dying to see what you do. Right. He says, oh, oh I'm glad you brought that up. Um, it was like 12 students. He says, I, I'm going to need 12 copies of White Fang. Okay, Jack London. Jack London's novel. Oh, okay, uh, so, so literature, what else? He said, no, that's it. <laughs> And he taught oh boy. a whole year all the subjects from one text. Wow. Now, I know for to the average home educating parent or even to professional teachers, they go, <gasps> sure, that's not enough resources. But, but the point was that he knew mm -hmm. that what a fifth grader needs to know about math is there. Is, is there. Right. It is in life. Right. You got to find it. Mm -hmm. This text just nudges us towards it. What right. they need to know about reading, writing, uh, history. If 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 you're playful enough to be willing to go into that sandbox, mm -hmm. you can make some amazing castles. Yeah. That that do promote a well-rounded, well-educated fifth grader. Yep. I wouldn't recommend that for a 12th grader. Right. But at that transitional point, especially if what you're trying to see is, is the foundation there mm -hmm. to then build out on in the second half of their education, right. to me it's a genius move yeah. because it cuts it down to just, it, it's not going to be this proliferation of, of worksheets and, and busy work. Right. It's going to be pretty plain and skinny. Yeah, yeah. And and you're going to be able to go very deep with that. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that's what I'm thinking is that um, so often I think in our rush to cover more, yeah. we cover it less well. Uh, well, that's I, I probably flew by the multa non multum earlier. Right, 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 right. But that's a, that Latin phrase. You're better than right. Latin yeah, than me. Yeah, sure, but, sure. But, well, but uh, your your uh, professor pal is better at it than I am. Right, I, like he he's <laughs> instantiating it, you know, like he's living it. Right, he says, "Look, they're gonna know this book, and you know, White Fang. It's not all they need to know, right? But it is worth knowing, and they're going to know it. And, and I think that that at the heart of it, that's what he's saying is, I want them to know they know something." Uh -huh. Not flash through it, oh yeah, I read that once. Right. No, for a whole year, Dr. Taylor and I right. really got that. And I've had that experience elsewhere. My two oldest had a seventh grade uh, humanities teacher who, recognizing he had mostly young men in his class, and it was a fairly small class, just he looked at the reading list of, mm -hmm. of mostly ancient literature, mm -hmm. saw one he felt he could sell them, got approval from the headmaster, which was me at the time, mm -hmm. and they spent the year on Beowulf. Sweet. And my sons to this day love that. Yeah. That, but they, have, they have found Beowulf uh -huh. everywhere. Right, right. You know, they're the ones that came to me. Yeah. I'm the movie guy. They came to me and go, Dad, there's this thing, the 13th Warrior. Have you ever seen it? <laughs> no, what is that? Oh, Dad, we please <laughs> right. beg Mother to let us. It's got it's it's R rated, Dad. So we're gonna <laughs> need your help, <laughs> boys. It has something to do with Bale. Oh yeah, you know. <laughs> and the away we went. Comes out. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that's really good. I I think. Um, I I mean I'm just I'm imagining uh, that group right who who uh, reads White Fang. Uh, that year, mm -hmm. they go to sixth grade, right? <laughs> and the teacher goes. And the teacher's like, "All right, so now we're gonna read, uh, you know, whatever, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, uh, and we're gonna read it in uh, three weeks." And I'm sure the kids are like, "What? We can't handle this." Like, yeah. <laughs> well, well, or um. You know, we can't handle it. That no, that yeah. they they may say that, but um, can we slow down? Right, but I, not I would think, because they're lazy. No, exactly. That that's that's what I'm. I would be hoping that they would say is not we can't handle it. But after three we, three weeks, they'd say, 
we're not half Just done. Started. Right? <laughs> right? Like right, right. there's more that we can do. And when you have a student saying asserting not dominance, but um autonomy or uh well, They're the I, ones I go trying to, to motivate things deeper. Exactly. I, I'm, I'm, I move to Tolkien's idea of sub-creation, right? Being a sub-creator uh, with the creator. Um, that's, you're, you're in it, you know, yeah. when, when you've done that. Um, well, you bring up Tolkien. <laughs> and, and to me, you've just brought up the author of one of the great, he's not known for this work. But I think it's once one of his finest works. His his short story Leaf by Nagel. Yeah, I have you ever read that? You've told me uh, I have not read it. You've okay. told me about it. I think on the podcast, maybe not on okay. the podcast. <laughs> so we we re, we revealed <laughs> Steve's memory right, or lack right, thereof right. in the middle. Of it. No, no. <clears throat> and I should explain to the listeners that if I sound like I'm pushing it tonight, it's because right before we went and started recording the podcast. I told a story to my wife and Jason that resulted in me blowing my voice out for the <laughs> evening. <laughs> so I'm it was on, worth it, though. I'm running on half gas. Right, no. And every time I've told that story, I've blown my voice out, so I should have known better. Uh, but no, Leaf by Niggle is this story Tolkien writes about how this guy who, who has the, uh, the, the desire, the heart of an artist, is trying to do this painting. Mm-hmm. And all he ever really gets accomplished in a lifetime of trying to do this masterpiece is one little detailed leaf. Mm. And he, at the end of it, he keeps getting distracted. He keeps helping out the people down the road, and he keeps, he keeps getting, and I have to go do this, and he keeps getting pulled away from his art. Yeah. And I'm not going to ruin the end of the story for you, but it is not a tragedy. Okay. All right. It comes out all right in the end. Mm. And and what's fascinating for Tolkien is that he pulls it out into eternity. Uh, okay, okay. And once angels provide Niggle with a perspective on his work, mm. he's able to see that that leaf is what he was about. <laughs> he had much bigger plans. Right. Um, and I think that there's something about a, 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 a cautionary tale there for the home educator. We might be trying to do too much, mm -hmm. and we might have a much better success mm -hmm. keeping it, not simple necessarily, but keeping it basic and really building a, a fine young man or young woman mm -hmm. than look at all the stuff. Right. Now, now, saying that, I still think... The time that's bought back in homeschooling, it does not take you as long right. as the, the highly formal. We, we covered all this with the schedule. Right, right. Um, affords creativity. I don't know how many homeschoolers have ranted and raved about this project that kind of grew up out of conversation about that extra time. Right. The kid that, that designed and built a shed for his dad or the girl who picked up quilting because of some stuff that was going on in geometry class. Or, right. I mean, it, it, it's such a myriad of possibilities. Sure. That's the beauty of it. Right. Right. Like you get, you, you have the chance to kick the tires until, until whatever you showed up for happens. Right. right. Like you, you have... You have that sort of, um, that, well, leisure uh, is the word that we've, we've taken to using, and, and, and I think that it, it shows itself here. Well, and, and the home is more full of life, mm -hmm. normal life, right, than maybe school is. Sure. So I see regularly opportunities for what, for lack of a better term, is called life skills. Okay. Working around... I, I would caution against the notion, I've got him homeschooling, this is free labor. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to call mowing the yard... Um, Discipline, the, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> or something like that. But at the same time, imagine all of the integrated curriculum available to dinner preparation. Mm -hmm. Or small engine repair to, to stay in the yard. Correct, right. right. Like, that's a thing. Right. Uh, I wish I knew it better than I know it. Right, and it's and it's comical. Not, not comical is not the right term. It's interesting or ironic. Right. 
that the the rage right now in public high schools, and I'm seeing it in private high schools, including my own, mm -hmm. is the life skills class where mm -hmm. you literally see a group of students out in the parking lot with the utility guy, the, the facility guy, yeah. showing them this is how you change a tire. Right, right. Now, I'm still old school. Dad should be, but but dad isn't. Right. This is the plea of the, of the life skills thing. A lot of parents working two jobs to afford their kids the future that they want them to have, and they're falling short on how to do the laundry or how to mm -hmm. change the tire or, yeah. or, or, or do their personal finances or something like that. And so I think it's legit if you're trying to pursue wisdom and virtue. Right. Uh, I, I think the twofer in the home education, I'm going to teach something I want my kid to know, but it's counting towards their formal education. Right. Totally legit. Yeah, absolutely. And so for me, I mean, just sort of uh, to kick it around, like, um, and, and maybe uh, give uh, some people some ideas, right? Uh, for me, obviously, that's going to be poetry. Yep. Uh, right? Like, I um, want my daughters to know poetry and to know it well. Um, and so that's going to be uh, a thing for us until to a minimum, right? And then if they, after that, uh, want to progress, okay. Um, if not, uh, you know, perhaps no. But um, whether they are, I mean, you know, right now, obviously they're too young to be in any sort of uh, formal uh, schooling, but like, that's the plan. Uh, I, I, I like that idea. Uh, if I were doing homeschooling with an older uh, student, I mean, this is something that's 10 years away for me, so it's a little bit of a moot point, but something that I think would be neat would be a, uh, a unit or a class or whatever on uh, book making, on printing, mm, yeah. right? Like the actual physical printing. Um, I have a typewriter in my class and <clears throat> in my classroom. And my students are enamored, shocked. It's like going to a museum. Awed. I mean, they, yeah. And it is. It is. I mean, you know, and they're like, uh, how old is this thing? Right? This is the question. I've had guesses uh, that it was 15 years old. I've had guesses that it was 200 years old. Right? Like, uh, now... And I don't beat them up for it. Uh, it's dude, just an who interesting... knows, right? Like, right. Yeah. Do you know how old you, it is? <laughs> when you're 12. Right. I'm, right. What, what? You know. A 25-year-old is ancient. Right. Yeah, it is. <laughs> or he or she is. And, uh, you know, you just obsolete uh, or, or uh, yeah, obsolete, I guess, technology is uh, something that's very odd, but it has an allure for that reason, right? Like, my students want to use my typewriter. Uh, you know, and it's it's always with great trepidation that they first ask, uh, Mr. Mr. Dollar, do you mind if we, uh, I was thinking maybe that I could, like, could I type? I'm like, yeah, sure, you can type. What do you mean on my typewriter? He, well, yeah, I was hoping. Yes, of course, right? Like, come on, sit down. And they love it. Mm. They love it. Uh, and so I would think that uh, to the expand the printer in the world, <laughs> <that's right. laughs> and most prone to error, <laughs> <laughs> but probably won't jam on you. Correct. You know. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, it's but it's fun. But to, I would think to expand that out into uh, book printing, book making, binding. Um, the glues, all of that stuff, you yep. could really nerd out on it. And, uh, man, I would show up for that. It allows parents to pass on passions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Things that they're good at that would probably never be possible in a school setting. Right. I think that that's where the fun... Because the, the, the child's going to pull off the pad. They know that mom and dad are gassed about this, and so they're going to be happy to humor them if nothing else. That's right. Uh, and, and, and I think that there's an interesting corollary there 
that you're going to, as a parent, knowing what their curriculum is like, because you've helped choose it, you have the ability to use it in the formation of them very specifically. And I have a, 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 okay. a particular story in mind. I, 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 I think this is uh, exemplary of, of, of how I think about specific assignments within a homeschool setting. Mm -hmm. uh, I know a family, five kids. Uh, they live on a farm. Uh, dad works from home mm -hmm. in, in the computer industry. Mom is teaching them homeschooling. Right. And um, the oldest is 12 or 13 and does not have a cell phone. Nice. And believes that this is criminal. Okay. All the 12, 13, 14 year olds he knows have phones. Right. Okay. Mom, Dad, I got to get a phone. Mm -hmm. Rather than just going, no, Mom's idea was what this sounds like a thesis. Uh. <laughs> what? <laughs> you believe. The, the, the issue here is whether you should have a cell phone or not. Right. And it sounds like you wish to argue that you ought to have. Affirmative, yes. <laughs> so, um, I believe a carefully written MLA formatted paper mm -hmm. that articulates at least three reasons why and at least two reasons why you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. And the uh, accompanying debate Right. that I would be glad to have with you then, once I know you're prepared for a real debate mm -hmm. and have thought about it. She said, I've never seen a paper written so fast in all my life. <laughs> with, I, I forget what she said, but with, with numerous right. works cited. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's something to be said for finding that vein of... right. I mean, you can't do that all the time. No, no. But, but when you can fit it to the moment, mm -hmm. it leaps ahead. That's right. That's, that's right. That's my thing. Right. The kid, uh, in the end, may or may not uh, get what he wants, right? But in either case, along the way, he got something very important. Right. The, 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 the skills have been honed. Right. And he sees it as at least potentially mm -hmm. practical. Right. I have a shot at a phone if I write a really good paper. Right. And and I think, man, the 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 big thing moving forward, like, is it important to lear, uh, learn to cite things? Sure. Is it important to learn how to write uh, in the format that somebody's expecting? Yes. Is it important to learn to uh, format well? Yes. Uh, he learned a lot of lessons. But uh, what you just said, he went into that believing, I have a shot at a phone. What he learned, I, what I would argue is the most important lesson that he learned in that is, this is what it looks like to take a shot. Like, right. I'm learning right. how to take a shot and win, right? Like, this is, uh, I'm not passive. Correct. Uh, I have something to do. This is uh, what it means to be mature. Exactly. And, man, a kid like that yep. now, probably probably could handle a cell phone. Right. And, and the danger there is, uh, on the part of the parent, to be able to go there. To be able to, to be legitimate. Right. And not just as soon as you receive the paper, go, hey, you still not getting a phone. Yeah, exactly. You know, you've, w when you've put well, you put Well, you can do process, that once or twice, maybe. Right, but you're yanking the feet out. Exactly. The, now you've placed, and, and this is true in the classroom as well, but but the the microcosm of a home education, uh, the, the parent is saying, I am joining you in a real process. I've got to... I've got to really read it. We've got to have a real conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't guarantee anything other than dialogue. Right. Right. That we're both sincere about this. Mm -hmm. Whereas maybe the classroom teacher, I, I got 20 of these essays to grade, and so maybe a short shrift <laughs> yeah. on the average essay. Yep. 
Good. All right. Well, yeah, I mean, lots more here. Uh, I'll, I'll close with, um, oh, man, I forgot the guy's name. He wrote the, uh, <laughs> you're not going to need any help because you know too many books about education. <laughs> um, but the, uh, John, whatever, he was teacher of the year in New York. Gatto. Gatto? John mm-hmm. Taylor Gatto, is that right? Mm-hmm. Um, Jonathan Taylor Thomas? All right, just kidding. No. Um, John Taylor Gatto. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, John Gatto. So he, uh, I, li- I was listening to um, one of his uh, interviews one time, and he was talking about um, what a people getting into college, right? And he said that one of the kids uh, got into college, just some kid, whatever, I don't know, um, that he got in, uh, and what did it for him was his sport. That this kid, you know, in a world full of basketball, football, volleyball, baseball players, this kid did uh, individual off-road unicycle racing. (laughs) And he would time himself on all these. He didn't do it with anybody. He didn't compete against anyone. He would just, yeah, he would just go for PRs, right? He was trying to improve himself in uh, in over, uh, what's sport. it called? Yeah, off-road unicycle uh, racing. <laughs> and uh, John Gatto's comment, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> John Gatto's, um, John Gatto's uh, comment, I mean, he's laughing his head off as he's telling the story, right? And, and uh, I'll never forget, he says, you know, in 10 lifetimes, in 10 lifetimes, I wouldn't have thought of that. I never would have thought uh, of that. Uh, but for this kid, it's what did it. Uh, and he was committed to it, and it paid off well. Um, John Gatto would need 10 lifetimes or more to think that up. But that kid, that's all he needed. Uh, right. And so, so too, for our students, uh, we ought to be looking for that thing uh, in this. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well put.